Hey guys and welcome to another video! Today I will be doing Ovarino Seraf characters, uh, well I think they're main characters, as a commission for a commissioner who already uh, actually requested the, the little girl from uh, Maggie the Labyrinth of Magic, a video that is really popular, Shahrazad, from my YouTube channel, so you can check that out. and. This is a person who actually commissioned me again since he was really satisfied with the quality of the drawings and I will be drawing this particular pairing uh, for him too and send it out tomorrow in the mail so he will be uh, receiving it as an original drawing. Um, this video I decided to make a bit longer so that you can see all the little details I'm putting in uh, in basic pencil. and. The reason why I haven't shown uh, the initial part of drawing with the pencil is because my uh, lighting uh, is something that I'm getting used to because of the new camera. Uh, it, it reacts differently to different lighting, so I tried switching lights several times so that I can uh, make the best, see, uh, best results uh, for you guys to be able to see my video as clear as possible even in the pencil state. Um, but this time I sh I have like I have been able to show you the basic uh, shapes done in pencil then transfer straight to inking part. This is a really complicated um, combination of details because my commissioner also wanted a specified background uh, with buildings and smoke and a sky so I did my best to draw out all the teeny tiny details on the characters clothes uniforms hats um, um, floating details and swords um, I really love the character on the right and their uniform piece because it has some sort of a half of a bow and it's a really interesting design and of course for drawing some characters that you're not really familiar with even when you are a professional animator you always need reference photos you need uh, character sheets you need an enlarged uh, photos and snapshots and screenshots of characters you will be drawing. Uh, this is exactly what I did because I needed to exactly know uh, where to place and how to shape their uh, armor or details and haircuts and how to style their faces to look as much as the original show's styling because when usually a commissioner wants me to draw a character from a certain show I try my best to make that character look as much in the style of the show as possible unless the commissioner has asked me otherwise. I can always turn characters into chibis, I can make them look more handsome or more like children. It's easy when you get to like mm, first when you make a sketch of the body skeleton then when you do the proportions right for a kid or an adult person or a chibi then the rest is easy you just transfer the details from those um, photos I was talking about or screenshots or character sheets so for drawing out different uh, specific details like swords and strict stuff like that I tend well rarely but even I tend to use the ruler and I always recommend to uh, everybody who's trying to look make their drawings look as professional uh, as possible even those curvy rulers if you find them because they're really good for drawing out curvy but straight lines uh, I don't know how to explain it better well, curvy, but uh, lines that are smooth, so that even if your hand is shaking, you get the perfect uh, desired shape, like curvy katana uh, edges and shapes like that. Uh, I love the fact that these two characters actually have two different types of swords. The character on the left has a katana-like sword, and the character on the right actually has a 
of Western design sword and I love, as I said before, I love the Western medieval clash uh, with 19th century uniforms. I have studied fashion and clothes for so many years and I just love when I see uh, where is the origin of the inspiration some Japanese authors and mangakas use. They really love combining uh, traditional ancient clothes with modern clothes and, and especially uh, army uniforms. And hats I don't see very often on characters, so I was really eager to draw out a hat on this left character and I really like the way that it presses down on his hair so his bangs are actually um, well they're actually in in several places at once and they're accompanied with sideburns and showing ears which is something that I don't usually see in manga characters because people always love making fluffy haircuts for the characters and rarely show the characters ears and as for the swords and details I really tried my best to place every line in its proper place as you can see when I finish doing line arts basic line arts I always try to erase the pencil as much as I can and then I proceed to making smaller and bigger black surfaces with a marker so that I can make some darker or further moments and parts of the clothing more visible uh, when you use black color. Uh, even though if characters actually wear black clothes if you're doing a colored illustration, uh, color black should be left only for details who are either, which are either really back, like floating behind the character, like the right character's um, sleeve or the little um, piece of their clothing on the bottom right corner of the drawing, uh, and of course the big flowing cape that is actually going behind the character and uh, making a huge shadow in its inside. That shadow is the darkest part of the drawing and that's where the black area should be. Um, the rest of the clothes for this character is actually black, but you don't want to destroy all the nice lines you just uh, spend a half an hour drawing so what you should use is maybe several kinds of dark gray really really dark gray colors um, maybe two shades and then you should use those to color in the dark uh, well the black parts of the clothing so that you don't lose all of the hard work you put into the clothes lines and also uh, little tiny triangles, you would never think they were, they were very important for the drawing, but they actually are, and they're, uh, they're actually really good to be placed in little corners where clothes overlaps. As for skin, I have used Skin Color Copic only for well, just shading basic parts of the faces because both of our characters actually wear gloves. And gloves are actually kind of a cheat sheet for people who don't know how to draw hands because then they can make uh, fat fingers, they can enlarge the hands and they can add little seams on the on the hands without it looking really bad. Um, this, this is probably why a lot of Japanese mangaka, especially if they're beginners, are actually placing their characters in gloves. But also gloves can actually look really impressive and I really can't blame anybody for putting gloves on their character. Uh, this character on the left actually has black hair, but as I said, I'm using N8, uh, the really dark gray Copic, to shade out and to fill in the black clothes and his hair. 
As for tiny details on his armor, well, his clothing, like this lines and, and edges of the clothes, I have really tried to avoid them and not to get over them with color which does not belong to them because these little lines I keep skipping uh, will actually be green and the reason why I'm leaving out white areas on his cape is for N4 Copic I will be using to highlight the lighter colored pieces of this black clothing. Everything that goes behind the character should actually be as dark colored as possible so that the character hits himself can actually uh, pop up and be more visible. Uh, one little trick I usually like to use and, re and to recommend to everybody, don't use uh, brightly colors, brightly colored backgrounds in general. Don't let the bright colors of the background eat your character and make the character invisible. Uh, literally, when you see a drawing where a character is colored in mild colors and the background is brightly colored with strong colors, with with uh, colors that are bright red, bright green, you will just lose the characters in those colors and you will, your drawing will lose its point. So always try to make the characters pop up and use bright colors and strong contrasts on the characters and when you go and do the backgrounds, do them with really diluted colors like fade, faded out colors, pastel colors, um, very light colors or just smudged up dirty colors but never really bright colors. Um, the, the toughest part about this drawing was actually filling in all these black areas. This actually took the most time but when I saw my um, total time um, count on this drawing I was actually surprised because it's, it took me literally about an hour and a half to finish everything which I was like whoa is this even possible but yeah I guess it used to take me at least two or three hours to do something like this but hey I think I leveled up so yay um, that's something I always want to tell to you guys um, it's that how many uh, it really depends the the type of a drawing you can make in a certain time uh, actually depends on just how met how much time you spend uh, practicing and repeating stuff and you'll get faster at it. It's exactly like trying to, I don't know, uh, train for some sports um, competition or something. When you do something a certain amount of times and repeat, 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 it gets faster. It's just as simple as that. Um, if you're lazy, then I don't know what to tell you because <laughs> when you just don't do stuff, stuff doesn't get done and that's about it. So I, I have started using uh, my favorite green shade, olive shade, for uh, placing in his armor as well clothes details. I keep saying armor, maybe because I'm really, really, really fond of drawing and coloring armors. As for uh, filling in surfaces with Copics, they never tend to actually look really filled out. You will always get a texture and there's practically nothing you can do about it. Even when you look in some of the top mangaka's art books, who do their art in any kind of marker, um, digital does not count in this particular story, um, even those professionals actually leave streaks. Uh, some of them use the streaks to play around and create textures they like on their characters, but usually you can't avoid any kind of streaks and to make the streaks look less hurtful for the eyes, I guess, is, well, the best way to 
mi minimum damage is actually to um, go and do some swirl uh, shapes, like swirl around with your with your marker, but that tends to really dry up the markers so when you're trying to fill in a lot of big surfaces be prepared that your marker will eventually dry out that's why you need to refill it and that's when the trouble starts because refills aren't cheap um, but once when you get a refill for a Copic you use a lot for example gray ones or skin colored ones um, then that refill will actually last you for years. That is why people decide to use Copics the most. Um, I don't advertise Copics because they sponsor me or something, no. Uh, I actually buy them and they're really expensive. And some of them I got from a friend who actually wanted to support me and we decided that I will be doing an entire art book so I can thank her. So no, Copics are not my sponsor. But yeah, they are a good tool and they really last a long time and they're really useful for professionals or future professionals. And they make great results once you get the hang of them. But if you don't have money for Copics, don't be afraid. I have several videos showing you that you can do exactly the same results with watercolors. The only reason I use Copics that much is because they save me a lot of time. Because to make a video, you not only need to color something or draw something, you need to edit it, you need to record the audio you're hearing right now, you need to montage it, you need to render it, and if your PC is bad, then you render it for days and pull out your hair and stuff. So let's get back to the drawing. Um, one of my favorite shades for, uh, for drawing with Copics is actually Warm Gray 2 and Warm Gray 3. Um, I use them for uh, clothes like this uh, that is actually white, but I like the dirty shade of gray I'm using on it. Well, not dirty in a sense it's bad, but in a sense it's more natural. As you can see, I never uh, fully... Um, I never fully filled in her uh, clothing, this white clothing. Um, I think the person on the right is a female, um, since she has a female name, but I won't discriminate because I haven't watched this show. Um, but I will, definitely, because it re looks really interesting. Uh, as for the details and the rest of the clothing details on the right character, I was really fascinated by it because these two uniforms actually are like yin and yang. They're completely, um, well not opposite, but they really really correspond with each other in a, in a like kind of a contrast way. I love the fact that the person on the right actually has a black, uh, black and gold shirt and a lot of different insignias and gold details. I really love shading gold details and metallic details and even a little bit of a samurai armor on uh, their left hand and blue eyes. So here comes the toughest part actually for me personally and that's after doing all the shading for the metal and the clothes it's time to see if the shades I used for the background are good enough because as I said you don't want the background to eat up your characters by having too much of uh, bright colors. I have used N4 marker to uh, outline um, and to draw out uh, outlines of a burning city, mega city. I uh, don't recommend that you uh, outline anything in the background uh, by using a fine liner or a pencil because then um, those lines will clash and connect with the lines of the characters and then again you'll have another problem and you won't be able to see if that's a building behind them or maybe a part of their armor or head head or hand etc so when you do backgrounds make draw them out 
uh, of pure color. Just try to paint them out, try to make them from several different kinds of shades and don't draw them out, don't draw them out with lines. Lines will definitely confuse people who will try to see your drawing. And of course, uh, I was really, really um, cautious by using this blue color. I did not want a typical um, black sky because that would make my shading for the characters go really differently. And that's something that I prefer to do digitally more. I really prefer brighter lighting and, and type of shading for characters when I do marker work because uh, when you mess up something with inverted light and complicated lighting like that, it's really hard to um, make those mistakes not visible and it's just a pain in the pee 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 pee. Anyway, uh, I started a first coat of blue. I even outlined some shapes that I will be turning into clouds later, later on. And I will definitely be using another coat of blue as fast as I can because I had a lot of details to go around and try not to mess up their faces and stuff like that. And after the first coat, I use those circular motions to actually um, make a complete sky texture without it being too streaky. Um, I apologize once again, I'm still testing out my video's uh, lighting because I'm not sure which kind of lighting will show the drawing in, the, in its best way, but I'm sure you will be able to see how it uh, ended up looking in the scanned version. And as you can see, I'm using circular motions and repeating the coat of blue to make the sky look less streaky. Then I am using uh, N2 Copic marker, that's a really really light gray, to actually blend some stuff in and color in the shapes, white shapes into actually clouds and little textures on the buildings in the back. And of course, uh, the last details are actually the best ones in my book, and that's using a white gel pen or jelly roll as people in the US like to call it, and draw out some white dots, but these actually are a, a little bit streaky and going upwards. They're supposed to represent actually pieces of paper, and soot and burnt out pieces of different things just floating up in the air. Uh, if you ever had a campfire and watched actually uh, into it, you will see that everything that burns goes out of the fire exactly like that, like little streaking uh, pieces of paper or light just floating away and I have drawn them out exactly like that, like little dots and little um, pieces of streaks just accompanying the dots. And they're done! If you want to learn how to draw like this, you can always support my work by purchasing your own Manga Crash Course book on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble's website and bookstores and bookstores across the globe. If you don't have this particular book in your local bookstore, you can always ask for the manager of the bookstore and ask for chances for them to ship them to that bookstore. If not, you can always log on online and all the links for online shopping of this book are in the description. See you guys next time!